Well, surprise, look at this. This was uh, just a couple days ago. Northwestern University um, discovers a giant balloon-like structures at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Well, isn't that interesting? You could look this up. This is dated September the 11th, just a couple uh, days ago. Um, what would that have to do with anything? Let's actually delete that one. Here's the uh, structure on one half of the galaxy that uh, they wanted to give you an image of. And this, of course, here we go. This, of course, would be the plane of inertia looking edge on at the Milky Way galaxy, which is the only way we can look at it. And this would be one half of the balloon light structure, and of course the other half would be down here. Now this looks really familiar. Now this, of course, would be the plane of inertia, which is, by the way, no one's ever said this before, the only place where life exists, right? And generation, or genesis occurs, is along the plane of inertia. And this, of course, is the uh, hyper... Um, hypertrochoid pattern or the hourglass shape and this would be the magnetic the toroidal yeah right the magnetic field because nothing exists in the zone of magnetism yeah okay let's actually erase all of this and take a look at something else and we could uh, delete this little image here we can actually see it on uh, galactic jets and this is looking, I think this is MSG 546 galaxy. Not that that's important at all. And we're looking at it like this. And uh, here, there. And this, of course, is the plane of inertia. And, of course, the toroidal, where no life exists, would be the magnetic. And this is the conjugate geometry of the entire universe. We have the magnetic, the toroidal, which is force in motion. And here we have increasing inertia and acceleration, right? These are the galactic jets with their uh, corresponding geomagnetic precession. I used hot pink for this, so it would actually show up best against uh, these various backgrounds. So uh, we can eliminate all, all of that. Okay, let's uh, get rid of uh, this one image. So apparently the big discovery was something I could have told you they would have discovered years and years ago. Even my detractors will have to admit to that. Here's another galaxy. Here you can see the exact same thing. The hypertrochoid. Here we have the plane of inertia. Yeah. Right here. And of course out here unseen is the magnetic. Yeah. The toroidal or donut shape. Right here, of course, plane of inertia. This is the only place where life and genesis exists. The only other thing that's important to define is uh, polarity, because people don't understand polarity. There's no such thing as a magnetic monopole, by the way. But if you actually take a figure S, yeah, like this, and you bend this end this way and this end this way, you'll actually end up with a three-dimensional S-curve because a force vector is not two-dimensional. Okay, here we have... Let me actually erase this. Make sure people think of polarity as... That. Well, polarity means two poles. We have a north pole here and a south pole here. It's kind of like we see on a bar magnet. Well, polarity and force in motion denotatively force in motion must be three-dimensional. It cannot be two-dimensional. This notion that uh, a magnet has two poles is absolutely ridiculous. A magnet doesn't have two poles. It actually has the inverse. This, of course, would be, whoops, right here at the center would be the plane of inertia, right? It has the inverse of counter space, right? And here's our three-dimensional S-curve right here. A three-dimensional S-curve. And this, by the way, if you actually draw sideways, which is the inverse of the hyper, uh, hyperboloidal, there we go, hourglass shape, increasing inertia and acceleration, the hypertrochoid, the hourglass shape, this is uh, inertia and acceleration, whoops, inertia and acceleration, and we, of course we have here centrifugal divergence, we have a force and motion, we actually end up here, if I could actually use a different color, red, here we have the three-dimensional S-curve, yeah, revolving right around. This is called the Lamore frequency, by the way, Lamore frequency. 
oops, there we go. A little more frequency. So defining polarity is really, oops, let me go to eraser here. Defining, there we go. Eraser doesn't work as fast as I like. There we go. Okay, plane of inertia, the hypertrochoid right here, hourglass shape. And here we have, this is the conjugate geometry of the universe, right? We have magnetism here in this zone. And you change colors to the yellow. Here we have, yeah. Here we have increasing inertia and acceleration. And over here we have F plus M, force in motion. This is the conjugate geometry of the universe. And right at the only place where life can exist is right here. The plane of inertia. Yes, indeedy. So the big discovery of two days ago by Northwestern University, I could have told you about years ago. It's like, whoa, we discovered these two bubbles on either side of the Milky Way galaxy. Whoa, that's fascinating. I couldn't have predicted that. I don't think I was talking about here. We have another galaxy. Here, all life exists at the plane of inertia. This is the plane of inertia right here. And this would be counter space. Right, and here we have the hypertrochoid. Right, the hypertrochoid of increasing inertia and acceleration. Also, too, we have galactic jets. And out here, the invisible. By the way, space has no properties. It only has attributes. And space is kind of like the uh, fart or after effect of a divergent magnetic field. Everything out here that we think of as space, it's empty space. This is the after effect of divergent magnetic fields, force in motion, F plus M, right? Force in motion, right? That's correct. This is the conjugate geometry of the universe, force in motion, inertia and acceleration. And all life occurs right here, 90 degrees to both, okay? The plane of inertia is 90 degrees to um, the uh, hypertrochoid of uh, inertia and acceleration, i.e. the dielectric, right? Right, 90 degrees. It's also 90 degrees to the force in motion, centrifugal divergence, magnetic field that makes up the spiral galaxy, magnetism. So 90 degrees, you need to look up the right-hand rule. I'm surprised at how many people were never taught about what the right-hand rule is. The only place... Where life exists is right here at this plane of inertia, right here. That's the only place where it exists. Absolutely the only place that it exists. Yeah. This is all really simple. No, it's complex. Is it really? Yeah, the plane of inertia inverse to the hypertrochoid of the dielectric. Here we have the dielectric right here. And it's also 90 degrees inverse to the magnetic, yeah? The donut shape, the torus, right? Yeah. How hard is this? This doesn't seem too super incredibly hard. This is the only place where Genesis and life exists, right? And galactic jets actually emanate a geomagnetic procession right here from, and right here in the center we got nothing, yeah? It's not nothing. It's a, a giant mass with no magnitude, a black hole. But a black hole is not black, and it's not a hole. It's literally a super mass with no magnitude because dielectric is overthrown magnetism's ability to keep it within the visible universe. You know, right here. It's not a hole. It looks like a hole. It's black. Yeah, it's still not a black hole. But when I call it a black hole, who cares? Words are just words. Words by any other name. What was it? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, right? So, here we got it. This is the uh, conjugate geometry of the universe. Force in motion and inertia and acceleration. Yeah? The conjugate geometry of the universe. The hypertrochoid and the torus. And additionally so, 90 degrees to both, the plane of inertia. Well, that was the big discovery from three day, two day, was it three days ago? The 11th? I guess it was three days ago. Oh my gosh, we've discovered these huge bubbles sticking outside of the... Yeah, that would be the bubbles of uh, of the hypertrochoidal 
relative to the edge of the plane of uh, inertia, uh, which would be our spiral galaxy, the Milky Way. So, yeah, I could have told you that a few years ago, Northwestern. Uh, thank you very much.